Welcome to Carnival in Brazil. <laughs> All right. Verde rosa, pink and green are the colors of my, this, this samba school of my heart, which is called Mangueira. All right, let me get my presentation down here and get myself set up. How are you all doing this afternoon? <laughs> Fantastic. Let me take this off so you guys can see me. <laughs> Find out who is this magic lady. <laughs> all right. How are you all doing this afternoon again? Good. Good. Fantastic. Let me turn this on. Put glasses on. <laughs> and a what? All right, <laughs> so my name is Corina Brito and uh, I, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Doris Derby and the Atlanta chapter of the Lynx for having me back in this beautiful library to talk about the culture of my beloved country of birth, Brazil. I want also to thank Ayana Zafir and Morris Gardner uh, for their help with the presentation set up and my husband, Paul Nunn, for his unwavering support to make this presentation run smoothly. Now, uh, I want to tell you that Carnival is a pre-land celebration, and just like Mardi Gras has its roots in pre-Christian pagan festivals. Brazil Carnival happens 40 days before Easter, starting on Friday evening and ending on Ash Wednesday at noon. Now, because Brazil was invaded and colonized by the Portuguese, their cultural traditions have a strong influence in Brazilian culture as well. The Portuguese entrudo, which means entrance into Lent, was the primitive form of the street carnival dating back to 1723. It consisted of bottles of water with lemon juice, flour, and mud. As you can see in this slide, the festivities also happen indoors. Here those people are having some fun over there. By the way, the first organized theme carnival parade was not documented in Brazil until 1873, which coincidentally was the same year that women were also allowed to participate in the carnival parades. Now, it is impossible to talk about the African influence in Brazilian culture without touching on the painful subject of slavery. Brazil's slave trade started in 1530s and ended in 1888 with the passing of the slavery abolition law. This map shows the Atlantic Ocean slave trade between 1701 and 1810. And you can see that Brazil was the biggest slave recipient of the Atlantic trade with 4.5 million enslaved Africans sent to Brazil alone. Brazil, in fact, is known to have the largest number of African descents outside of Africa. The African groups that ended up in Brazil came from, the, from different ethnicities in different African regions. Here you see some representatives of these African nations. Others not shown here were the Yoruba, Igbo, Fon, Ashanti, Iwi, and Mandinka. The Portuguese colonizer, not being able to identify each group, would simply identify them as Congolese. This diverse group of people brought with them their music, dance, and their religion. It is believed that African culture kept more of its purity in Brazil than in the US due to a variety of reasons. The sheer number of Africans taken to Brazil, the large concentration of slaves and freed slaves in large coastal cities like Rio, Salvador, and Recife, away from the constraints of rural plantation life, the influence of the Catholic Church through the Irmandades or Brotherhoods, which helped them raise funds and perpetuate their African traditions, and the existence of quilombos, which were colonies formed by runaway slaves who organized a society based on African costumes. Now, these uh, African peoples did not recognize in privacy the powers that were, like the Portuguese king, the governors, and so forth. Instead, they would choose their own king, often true African royalty, to whom they vow obedience, and to whom they would dedicate their efforts by raising funds for the purpose of bearing their own dignity, build places of worship, organize their own policies, organize themselves politically, and later to buy the freedom of someone of their own group. These kings had a leadership role within the slave population that was acknowledged by the Portuguese administration. 
In fact, the King of Congo was the liaison between the Portuguese authority and the slave community. The crowning ceremony, which became known as the crowning of the King of Congo, was performed during the feast of Nossa Senhora do Rosário, who is considered the patron saint of blacks in Brazil. The feast felt during Christmas period when apparently some of the African descents had free days to enjoy the celebration. In this slide, you can see the Congolese royal family at the center and the musicians, of course, leading the way. After the coronation, these kings and their royal family would receive compliments from the other African nations, which were called embassies. On this slide, you can see the King of Congo and his royal family, the queen, princess, and their master of ceremony receiving donations after the coronation ceremony. Now, it is important to note that to this day, these festivities are still celebrated all over Brazil. In this slide, you can see a modern day crowning of the King of Congo. These festivities filled with music and dance are called congadas, and they are celebrated in the Christmas season in certain parts of Brazil. Now, some exceptions occur when this crowning celebration happens during carnival. In the state of Pernambuco, this festival is called Maracatu. In this slide, you can see the king and queen of Maracatu. Now, after May 13, uh, 1888, with the abolition of slavery and the establishment of the republic form of government in Brazil, the Afro Brotherhoods and their crowning ceremonies lost most of their reasons to exist, either because there were no more African nobles to pay homage to, or because their own condition has somewhat improved. Nevertheless, the tradition continued during carnival, and so that the embassies or nations became the cordons, blocos, ranchos, and escola de samba, the so uh, well-known samba schools. Now, in 1808, the Portuguese royal family and its entire court moved to Brazil, escaping Napoleon's troop that invaded Portugal. Brazil becomes the capital of the Portuguese kingdom and court members that were not accustomed to the Brazilian way of living complained to King Don Juan VI that it didn't bode well for their European guests to see all of these conglomerates of black people in the streets. Hence, the African descendants' feast became prohibited. Nevertheless, they would always find a way to celebrate, either by doing it far from where the nobles lived or they would take advantage of the natural confusion of carnival, then known as Entrudo, and celebrate openly in downtown Rio de Janeiro. Brazilian culture, and especially its rich musical, music, is extracted from two basic African matrixes, the Congolese and the Yoruba roots. The first one is the spine of the carnival music, the samba, the second, the Yoruba, was the mode for most of the Afro-Brazilian religious music and the styles that came from that. Hodas, or circles of song and dance, accompanied by clapping and sometimes homemade instruments were common among slaves and slaves' descendants, like this one registered by the German painter Johann Moritz Rujandas. Now, the Lundu was one of the earliest documented popular music genres brought to Brazil by the Bantu people in 1780. It was a dance song form considered quite sensuous because of the umbigada, a naval touching movement that meant an invitation to join the dance circle. A much more contrite form of the lundu was also performed in the Portuguese court and in Brazilian salons. Later, the lundu influenced another very popular dance called machixi. The contributions of the African element in Brazilian music is vast. Very important influences are the polyrhythmic variations and cadences, which brought together with the Portuguese and European melodies new and unexpected creations. The combination of elements of these different cultures is responsible for the typical Brazilian music styles like samba, which is the genre of music most used in modern carnival parades. <clears throat> The origin of the word samba is controversial. One of the meanings are linked to the Banto language, umbundu, where samba means to be in a state of happiness or excitement. 
Another great African influence in Brazilian carnival are the instruments still used nowadays in the samba schools. Some of them are the agogo, from the Yoruba agogo, meaning bells. It's a single multiple bell now used in the samba baterias, which is this percussion ensemble from the samba schools. The agogo may be the oldest samba instrument, and it has the highest pitch of any of the bateria instruments. The cuica is a friction drum with a large pitch range produced by changing tension on the head of the drum. Different sources trace it also to Bantu uh, peoples. It, it is also believed that the cuica was used in Africa as a call for the male lion since the sound mimics the roar of the female lioness. And the ganza, which comes from the kibundu nganza, which means kabasa, gourd. It acts like a shaker. You're probably going to hear the, all those sounds in a little while when, it, when the samba group comes in. And you guys can have a lot of fun, by the way. Now, the samba music style we know today was born in Rio de Janeiro in the early 20th century around, around Praça 11, 11 Square. This place was called Mini Africa due to the influx of blacks, usually coming from Bahia, who brought with them their African and Afro-Brazilian costumes. Many slaves and former slaves had been immigrating to Rio since the late 19th century due to the decline of the fortunes of tobacco and cocoa plantations in Bahia. And also because of two important law enactments, the law of the free womb in 1871, which said that any uh, a child, black child that would be born from that day onwards would be free from, from birth, and the abolition of slavery in 1888. The Bahia matriarchs, usually called tias, aunts, were usually the ones who managed to carry on the traditions in Rio. And it was in the home of Tia Siata that a group of very talented musicians started to gather in the evenings to jam and create music until the first rays of dawn would appear. Amongst them, the legendary Alfredo da Rocha Viana Jr., known as Pixinguinha, João da Baiana, and Ernesto dos Santos, known as Donga. Those people are kind of royalty in music history in Brazil, by the way. Uh, the first official samba, called Pelo Telefone, although registered by Dong in 1916, was apparently a collaborative composition by many musicians, including Donga, Tia Siata, and Mauro de Almeida. Now, samba is an art form celebrated 100 years in 2016. The Escola de Sambas, or Samba Schools, often associated with Carnival, were first created in 1928 the first official samba school was created by an Afro-descendant, Ismael Silva, and it was called Deixa Falar, Let Them Talk. The name school came about because the initial rehearsals were made on an empty lot next to an actual school. Some of the sambistas thought that although formal education was beyond their reach, no one knew more about samba than them. Hence, their school refers to the method of learning, learning music through community integration and participation, where all members of a given neighborhood share their social music experiences with each other. The first competition among samba schools happened in 1932, and Mangueira was the winner. <laughs> because samba is an evolving musical uh, form that encompasses variations from slow to fast and distinctive lyric structure, with the passing years, samba schools have adopted more contemporary samba styles. Now, nowadays, to organize a samba school is a job that involves thousands of people. Musicians, dancers, artisans, costume makers, among many others. Carnival in Rio has become a multi-million dollar industry. According to the site Pan Rotas, this year of 2019, it attracted 1.6 million visitors and netted a gross income of 3.78 billion reais. Now, each summer school has different sections or alas. The Mestre Sala, Master of Ceremony in Porta Bandeira, Samba School Flag Bearer in the Brazilian Carnival, are the hyperbolic representation of the nobility from the 17th century Brazil. With time, these Afro-Brazilians adopt the intrudo as their own. 
And they always had a couple that would dress up in noble fashion and imitate the gait and mannerisms of the nobility as a way of mocking them and their dances. The Mestre Sala and Porta Bandera are two very important figures in the carnival. This couple has its own special evaluation points during the carnival parade. Some of, some of the requisites they are graded upon are the luxurious design of the attire, which has to be in the colors of the samba school they represent, their choreography, which has to be gracious and noble. The Porta Bandera, by the way, needs to make sure that the banner never touched her body, nor that the banner ever rose around the mast. The couple can lose points if they are caught with their backs to each other, if they drop any part of the attire, like a hat or a handkerchief, and they cannot talk to each other during their performance. Now, probably the most important hour or section of the carnival procession is in a Sunday school, and my favorite is the Ala das Baianas, or Baiana section. It was officially introduced into the carnival parade in 1930. This section, main purpose is to pay homage to the Tias, like Tia Siata, who were the matriarchs and care of the African culture whenever, wherever they went. This mandatory section in all the Samba Schools Parade shows the importance of these women and their African heritage in the history of Brazilian carnival. Although in the beginning, the attire consisted mainly, mainly of the traditional Baiana garb, through the years, it became more stylized to reflect the theme the Samba School was presenting as a whole. The musical theme for each Samba School is called Samba Enredo, or a story samba. The Samba Enredo is recorded and released by each school, each Samba School prior to Carnival making it easier for every carnavalesco or carnival fan to learn the song and sing over the top of their lungs during the carnival parade. For instance, the samba head of the Mangueira Samba School for this year was based on historical facts, and it was called História para Nina Gente Grande, or Bedside Story for Grown Ups. Its author, Leandro Vieira, wanted to show the other side of the coin of Brazilian history. So instead of mentioning the big names we find in the history books, he chose to mention the names of common people that should be in the history books, but that either by mistake or on purpose were left out. On the top left slide, you see the portraits of the so-called heroes of Brazilian history books, the European invaders, the colonizers, and the religious proselytizers. On the bottom right side slide, they have been replaced with the heroes of the indigenous and Afro-Brazilian resistance. While a young Afro-Brazilian descent is raised by two men representing indigenous and African heritage. She's raising her own banner saying present to mean that she is present and part of Brazilian history. According to Leandro, the purpose of his lyrics is to question historical facts that have been crystallized in our collective mind Mangueira Sambenredo got a lot of attention because it also pays homage to Marielle Franco, the councilwoman for Rio de Janeiro who was murdered on March 14th last year. Huge banners with her face and of other important Afro-Brazilians were flown during the parade, as you can see on the top right slide. Now, I'm going to finish this uh, presentation, and I'm going to play the Sambenredo of Mangueira. And I have some copies here with the Portuguese words. If anyone speaks Um, we're going to do this, and I'm going to be showing beautiful images of the Ala das Baianas, that section that I told you that's my favorite in the Carnival Parade. And I, I think you're going to truly enjoy it. I mean, the, 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 the scenes are absolutely beautiful. And then we'll be done. Isn't this beautiful? I mean, this is absolutely, I, I mean, that's one of my dreams. One day I'm going to go out in one of the Samba schools, and I'm going to be in the Bayana section. I just don't know if I'll be able to, to wear all this garb because it's very hot. <laughs>